All right, I've gotten so many requests, messages and everything about how we make our balloon garlands and I've never really covered that topic too much. But what I wanted to do is give you some quick tips and tricks on how we make our balloon garlands, how other people make them, and I'll let you choose which way is best for you. I'm gonna go over the main concept. With this stuff, you should be able to just pick up what we have with our concepts and build any garland you want. So let's just get started. All right, so first topic is balloons. What balloons do I get? Where do I get them? And to create the garlands you see online, you're gonna need quality balloons. Not only will they last longer, they're gonna look better and they're a lot thicker and they're a lot less see-through and they shape a lot better. There's a lot more different sizes. So there's a lot of different reasons you would want quality balloons. Quality balloons, that makes a big difference between a balloon garland that you're like, what happened there? And a balloon garland where you're like, whoa, how did they do that? Balloons, you can't do it with, I'm sorry, Walmart balloons, dollar store balloons, they don't have that quality. They blow up into more of an egg shape. Um, they're a lot more transparent. Uh, they pop a lot easier. So they're definitely not the best brand. So the top brands, they're gonna be more expensive, but you're gonna see something like Tuftex, Qualitex, Batalitex, Sempertex, the same thing. There's even Guimar. There's a, different, there's a lot of different brands out there and you're gonna use all of them. So they all have different color palettes, different everything. So quality balloons, number one. Number two, what do you blow them up with? Uh, an air pump. We have a bigger one that we use, but really you can get away with something like this for most of the balloons that you're gonna be doing are gonna be okay with this, if not a hand pump. And with balloons also, they come in five inch, nine inch, 11 inch, 12 inch, 15 inch, 16 inch, 24 inch, 30 inch, 36 inch. And you're gonna need to get a lot of those different sizes you can kind of help out like you can get a 16 inch and blow it down to only like a 12 inch but a lot of that you can't keep blowing down it'll look egg shaped so you can get away you have a little bit of leeway with some of the different sizes and balloons more than often you're just gonna have to get those sizes or something similar it's very difficult to blow up a big balloon but only keep it that small and you're not gonna be able to blow up a small balloon big they're just gonna look funny they're not the shape that you want so another thing that we're gonna cover with balloons is the shape that can change the whole look of the garland. You're gonna ruin your garland if you blow up egg shape. So what I'm talking about is a balloon that when you blow it up normally it's gonna be egg shaped. It'll blow up this size, but you gotta let air out and you kinda push it in a little bit. Once it's kinda pushed in, you want it round that you see where it looks more natural and fluent than versus you see a bunch of just eggs everywhere. It, it's not gonna work out, it's not easier, it's just doesn't look right. One of the main things is literally just letting some air out and that'll kind of soften your balloon to where it's more round shape or it's gonna make a bigger difference when you see all the round shapes versus a bunch of egg shape don't do it you also want to do make sure if you're outdoors you're gonna under inflate your balloon a little bit just because the heat can cause a lot of different expansions it'll pop your balloon a lot easier so you definitely want to under inflate to compensate for that if you're gonna be outdoors definitely stick away from the Sun the Sun is dangerous some people want to steer them away from the Sun try to get them in the shade as much as you can you have a lot better chance of your balloons lasting longer steer as much as you can into the shade especially if you're like me and you're I'm in Texas this Texas heat so the next thing you will need for balloons, people are asking a lot what you're gonna use a lot. Just wanna mention real quick, it's 260 balloons. These are two, these are called 260. These are the ones those people blow up and they make different animal shapes with. But we're not gonna blow these up. These are almost like rubber bands. So think of them, these are just, uh, these are what we're gonna use to tie our balloon garden usually to the backdrop. And you're gonna use these a lot for different other things. These are very helpful. You're gonna need 260. All right, so the second topic is how are you gonna blow up the balloons? So old fashioned hand pump will work. Definitely get you tired. If you're just starting out, this is something you can use. Uh, even a $20 Amazon pump that you can get, it, they definitely work out. We have a larger pump that we use a lot of the times, but really you don't need it unless you're blowing up certain size balloons. It helps out a lot. But this can, if you're just starting out, I'd recommend just getting one of these. But I will tell you, if you start doing double stuff, it, very, it gets very difficult with this and it's kind of beneficial to have the bigger machine, especially if you're doing a lot of double stuff. For a lot of double stuff, you're gonna end up doing hand pump because this doesn't have the force to expand those double stuffs. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're just starting out, this is great. All right, so balloons blowing up. Now, how do we tie them together? So there's three different options. The first option is actually just linking the balloons, getting another balloon and another balloon, and you're just wrapping them together. It pulls it tighter, and I definitely love this option. That's the one we use most of the time. The second option is actually using 260s. You'll tie it, you'll make a duplex, and you just wrap it around, wrap it around, and wrap it around. And then all you're gonna do is get another 260, wrap it to the next one and you're gonna keep it going almost like a string. That's definitely a great option. We've used that a lot as well. Our third option is it's used a lot. I don't wanna hate on it. It's just not something I like just because we've ran into some issues with it. So if you're just starting out, I know a lot of people use it fishing string. So what they do is they'll try the, they'll tie the duplex balloon together. You push on the fishing string, you tie it, you just wrap it around there and push it. The next one, you just keep pushing along. The problem with that that we've run into is a lot of times uh, over time, especially with transport moving along, sometimes they, they kind of loosen up 
and then you don't want your balloons to have a little bit of a gap and you kind of have to mess with it a lot. What I like about when you tie your balloons together, they're actually, you're letting the elasticity pull it together and you're able to get a lot more of that organic shape. You can actually just turn the balloons around and they're manipulating themselves around and making different organic shapes instead of just one long fishing string one. But definitely up to you. The one we use on here is just wrapped together. Let you see that one in a little bit. So our third main topic kind of ties in a couple of things together. Blowing up the balloons, tying them together, and style. So these are all gonna be integrated in one. So like I told you, how you blow up your balloons matters. So this is an 11 inch. All these right here are 11 inches, but this is probably blown up to like maybe nine to 10 inches. And you can see how round it is. That's what you're looking for, almost like a grape. So what we do is blow it up to the 11, let some air out until it's a nice round shape, and then just tie it, all right? And so I got three of them of the 11s. This is actually an 18, and it's not blown up to the full 18. We've kind of let some air out. And again, you get that nice round shape that you need. So before I begin, I do want to let you know these are double stuffed. And you double stuff to get different colors, but also to make it a lot more solid and a cleaner look. You don't always have to double stuff. It just, a lot of times when you see custom colors, they're going to be double stuffed. This is a mustard yellow. But when we put it, it was a little brighter from what we wanted, so we wanted to kind of bring down the tone and for the fall colors. So we actually have red under the mustard yellow. Definitely love the way it made that mustard yellow look. All you're gonna do to double stuff balloons is you need just a stick. It could be a pencil, a pen, anything. We use these kind of skewers that are they're just soft on both sides. The two different color balloons. And then stuff the balloon. A lot of times if you twist it, it goes in a lot easier this way. And you blow it up and you get that custom color. A lot more harder to blow up, but definitely you see the look it gets versus just other colors that we would have used. All right, so all these are, these are double stuffed. You get your pump, you blow up one, blow up the other. They're both here. And then what you're gonna do is wrap them together as a duplex and you can tie them together. And there you go, duplex. You got two. And then what you can do is you can do that up to three, four, however you wanna do it. Try this. Right, so now you got two of all different sizes. Wrap this around, you're just gonna cross them over. And look, that's what we're going for. And so if you're doing the fishing string method, you would have just a bunch of a bunch of these, and all you're gonna do is just wrap it around, just like that. Have the string coming out, make sure you're gonna have a good 20 footer because it's easier to cut after. And then you just get the next one, wrap it around, push it tighter, wrap it around, push it tighter, and then that's how you build that straight guard. If you want a more organic look, kind of a lot of the style we do here, I'm gonna show you in a second. All right, so now we got our second cluster. So our first cluster, second cluster, they're different sizes of balloons. So some of these, they're all gonna be around 11, but some are blown up to about nine inches, eight inches, 11 inches. They're blown up in different sizes to give it that more organic look. And so for this option, if we're putting these together, we would just, you grab the neck from one of these, try the loosest one, and you grab the neck from one of these, it's gonna wrap them around each other. So it may feel scary once you're pulling on these balloons, but again, we're using quality balloons, and you can pull on these, they're not gonna pop. And you're gonna wrap it all the way around, and it's gonna give you a better look. So there we go. Now we got another cluster, all right? And so your style ties into how you wanna arrange these balloons. You can get a lot of different 11s, 12, 17s, and wrap them together. You just want different clusters of different sizes. Don't make the exact same cluster. So if I were to make another cluster, we'll kind of just mix match it just so it doesn't look exactly the same. But now the other method, if you wanted to use 260s, so what they do is you'll get a 260, similar to exactly what you would do with the fishing string, but what I like about this, it's like a rubber bread. It's pushing together. Exactly what this does, when we just tied this, if you wanted to make a different shape of this and you're putting up and you want it to look more organic, you kind of, you can just manipulate the balloons however you want, and they'll, they'll kind of still pull towards each other. So we can literally just change the shape easily just cut by moving the balloons around, you're changing that shape to exactly where you want. That's not so easy with the fishing string, all right, so now we have our second cluster. And so the same thing with this. So this way, if you wanted the fishing string, again, just tie it and wrap it. But for us, we have two other options. We can wrap just how we did this one before, and I'll grab a long neck from this one. See how we can stretch this out? Grab the long neck from this, grab one from here, wrap them around. And then all you're gonna do is that's how you build your balloon garden because it's gonna be constant pressure. Those balloons are pulling together to kind of keep, keep their shape. And that's what you want when you're setting up a balloon garden. You want it to keep its shape. But instead, you can also do it with the 260, which works out, it's just like a rubber band and it kind of pulls it in similar the same way. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. Just like you would do the fishing string. Wrap it 
where you want it. Double knot it is usually what I do. And then all you're gonna be doing is this two, this 260, you're just gonna be stretching it out and wrapping it around the next one and you keep going. And then we still have more. So we're just gonna keep tying and keep tying and all you're gonna do whenever it gets towards the end, you're just gonna tie another 260 and then you can keep this going and you're gonna use that to tie all your balloons together. We've done that one, but I definitely like the one before where you just wrap all the necks together. So I cut the 260 and if we're gonna tie it the way we did this balloon garden, all I'm gonna do is find a loose neck from here and then find a loose neck from here. All right, and I'm gonna wrap them around each other. See how it's holding its shape? If I did that with the fishing string, it'd want to bend. Even the 260s kind of want to give it some bend, but since I'm wrapped around it, it actually just, it's pulling so tight because of the necks, it holds itself together. That definitely makes it a lot easier to make something like this. So again, this ties into one of the biggest things is style. How you put these balloons, how many different sizes you use, where you put those sizes, matter so all this is is just some tips and tricks that we use i'm nowhere near those professionals the way they do those stuff you've seen those things on instagram man they look amazing i just wanted to give you some tips and tricks that i've learned these will kind of help you start but you will need to find your style and what kind of goes with you and the ones you like some people love the ones that just wrap all the way around some people like the more organic which the ones we kind of lean towards is a lot of the flowy type of organic and that's where putting your balloons together matters. Putting your balloons together the different sizes and where you put them is the style of how your garland's gonna look. And you may wonder why. So just start looking at that balloon pictures on Instagram and you'll see the difference of your eye, what your eye is drawn to. And a lot of times it's gonna be organic style. It's that flow. It's almost like if someone took a picture of a, of a waterfall, but still, so you can see and you know the flow that that waterfall has and you see how beautiful it looks. That's the same way when some, and sometimes you'll see some balloon gardens, how they're just set up like that. You just see the flow of everything looking at it. It's like, man, my eye likes that, man, that's beautiful. One of the big tips that reasons they look so beautiful is also the depth of field. So when you give these nice round shapes, which look organic, but they're also different sizes, it gives you a different depth, a different field, a different shadow. And so once you see it in the back, it just, your eye is drawn to that. There's people who do these way better than what we do. And definitely I encourage you to find your style, look online. A lot of these balloon artists, they offer their own classes and they do a lot of that stuff. So I do recommend find someone who you like, you like their style, you like the way they do stuff and try to take one of their classes and they'll show you how they exactly put their balloon gardens together and you can kind of use that style to build your own style and say this is what I like, this is what I don't like and kind of grow into your own niche and people are gonna start looking at your stuff and be like, man, I want her. I'm not I'm gonna be worried about the money because I want her. I'm not looking for the cheapest deal because when I get the cheapest deal, it looks like this, but I want it looking like hers or no one else is doing it like them. So that's the reason I'll pay whatever I need to pay because I want it looking like that. So again, we're, I'm not even close to any of the best. Man, they look beautiful. But I've gotten so many messages on how we put these together. I definitely just want to keep this short and give you all the tips and tricks. And definitely, definitely recommend pay the money, take the class, learn a new skill, but also learn how they put that balloon garden together because everybody has their own style. So I always tell people this is like art. So you have a lot of different painters. Not everybody's Picasso. Just because you have some watercolors and a paintbrush ain't gonna make you paint that stuff. So definitely, it takes practice, takes time. When we first started trying to do balloon garlands, I went and bought a bunch of, a bunch of Walmart balloons. And uh, me and my sister and my wife, we got together. We tried to put some together on a, on a backdrop. Man, they looked ugly. It was egg shaped and we were like, why doesn't this look right? Uh, the style, the balloons, everything was horrible and it was off. Uh, it definitely took a long time to get a lot better at it, but um, a fun process, I'm glad I learned. There's definitely a lot more to learn, I'm still learning every day. Most of the common garlands you're gonna see uh, 10 feet, 12 feet, uh, 14 feet is usually you get a good size L. And then what we store ours in for transport is mattress bags. So if you look online, you'll see at the bottom of the Amazon links, uh, it's a mattress bag. It's a big old plastic bag and it's reusable, so what we'll do, is I'll get all the balloon garlands. I can usually stuff it in there. I can, I've usually gotten up to a 20 footer into a mattress bag, put it there, we're good to go. But you can transport them however you want, or you can blow them up on site, or you can just leave them as clusters. And when you get to site, you just tie them together and it's a lot easier that way. And so the last part, which I've saved to last, is the five inch balloon. So this is just 
our body. What makes this look great is those five inch balloons, which you're gonna hear them common called fillers. And they literally try, when we use them, to fill up gaps that you see on a balloon garden where it just doesn't look right. So if you see a lot of 12 inch, 11 inch balloons, 16 inches together, you're gonna see a lot of different gaps. I'll show you in a second. So if you see these balloons, uh, all these, these are all standard, just about 11 inches, and you can see that they just kind of tied together. It's just a regular balloon garland. Why doesn't it look any good? Because it doesn't have any of those five inch to kind of fill in those holes and those gaps. And where you place those five inch balloons makes a big difference. And there's a lot of different style with those. Most people, let me show you real quick on what they do. All right, so these are all just five inches tied together. So you'll blow up some five inches and you'll actually time into like doubles or um, duplets, quads, triplets. So these are three a piece. However you want to put them, two, three, four. Those are just little sections. And what you're going to do is you get a 260, wrap it around. You get one more and you wrap it around. And so now you have this. It's a 260 balloon in between. You have a little bundle here, a little bundle here, and it's just a 260. So what you do with this is you actually wrap this around, and these are only meant to be in the front. So in the back, you don't need 260s. Nobody's gonna see it. But you wrap this around, and you look for any gaps that you see that just don't look right, especially around bigger balloons to smaller balloons. You're gonna see some gaps. And you see how you, it's easy to manipulate around here. That's why I really like those 260s. And so all you're doing is that and they kind of hold it in place. Those rubber bands, those 260 balloons just wrapped around, they hold that in place. But what I like to do and what I've kind of seen other people do is use those a little bit more for some, um, a little bit more for some style, kind of have those flow as well. And that's kind of exactly what we did here is to kind of have these flow. I don't know if you can see this right above me. We have it flowing. So it's a lot of the five inches. You can do it, you can tie them together or you can still do 260 balloons if you're kind of worried how it's gonna come out. You can tie the 260s and put them in place and it still pulls them to where you need them. Let me show you what I mean when I wrap it around to kind of have it flowing. So if you look, you can see we have a flow coming down, it's coming up. And usually if you do the same colored balloons, I just wanted it to stick out so you can kind of see it. But when you use the same colored balloons, it looks a lot better. And then you're just gonna flow along. Like if we went to here, we can go into black and different colors. And sometimes you let the black overflow onto the other one. It just makes it look more organic, more flowy. And so just don't just do what I do. Definitely just take your time to experiment. Buy some balloons and kind of try to build a small six foot garden by yourself and kind of see, experiment and to find out what you like in your style. And definitely recommend taking some classes online. Uh, there's a lot of people who offer them um, and they're definitely way more skilled. You'll definitely learn a lot more than you will here. I just wanted to give you some basic quick tips and tricks. If you're just starting out and you want to do an awesome balloon for one of your child's birthdays and you just said, I want to do it. I want to figure it out. This video is for you. A lot of quick tips and tricks so you can build it the way you want. Make it look exactly the way you want. And if that's something that interests you, definitely start building your skill. Take some more classes and learn as much as you can. So if you want, watch and you'll see some of the same tricks that we use to put this balloon garden together. All right, I'll catch you on the next one and thank you for watching.
So thank you so much for the support. I'll see you on the next one.